In this video, I want to define uh, just what exactly is this thing called patriarchy uh, in light of the fact that many patriarchs and traditionalists uh, are advocating for a return to it uh, without actually understanding what it actually means and what that entails. Now, some of them have taken in feminist fashion to pointing to the dictionary definition of patriarchy uh, as though uh, the dictionary definition of such a thing accurately describes what it actually is, uh, much like feminists will say that the dictionary definition defines feminism as equality for both men and women, when we both know that isn't the case at all. So with that said, um, let's define patriarchy. What patriarchy is, is a cyclical mechanism revolving around reproduction between the sexes for building civilization that requires male utility to a point where all input from the female other than her reproductive ability will inevitably converge to zero. Now, patriarchy is nothing more than a temporary check on hypergamy in that within the seeds of any patriarchy are the beginnings of government largesse with which female hypergamy will eventually replace the male with every single time meaning that the beginnings of patriarchy are always typified by a mechanism by which the masses of men that do not have a chance for reproduction in the alpha male dominated matriarchal setting strike a bargain with women in which mechanisms are put into place where the masses of men can provide excess utility in exchange for women repressing their hypergamy it is a transaction in which more men have a fighting chance at reproduction than they would in the matriarchal setting nothing more nothing less now the only thing is that patriarchies, since they rely on male utility exclusively, will, by definition, create an environment where those men best able to provide this utility are most desired from women, and thus a process self-initiates in all patriarchies wherein male competition to provide utility creates an increasingly shrinking pool of men that are acceptable for the female's terms of reproduction, and thus we will see in any patriarchy, hypergamy begin to immediately reassert itself. Hypergamy reassertion will follow a very clear path in which the reassertion of it correlates directly with the collective success of the patriarchy, i.e. the collective male utility, in terms of technological development, territory acquisition, affluence, and relative peace and stability, etc., etc. Uh, meaning that in creating a situation where a great many men have a fighting chance at reproduction, while still retaining some men that will want to procreate but will be deemed unfit for doing so by women, a natural state of male-on-male -male competition will ensue in which explosive innovation, technological development, and military imperialism will also ensue, leading eventually to wealth, stability, and security simultaneously occurring with hypergamy reassertion in which the cost of access to reproductive ability will climb to such a degree that essentially nothing will be required from women in regards to their contributions to the patriarchy other than a reproductive ability and only after the mad dash from the men of the patriarchy to provide utility to women has acquired vast wealth and stability. And it is at this very moment, at this uh, apex of patriarchy that I call it, uh, that women will having one biological asset that compares in value with the totality of the combined wealth and resource derived from male utility uh, it is at this moment that women will begin leveraging their reproductive power to court the ultimate provider and protector, which is, of course, the state. And this is what I mean when I say that patriarchy carries within it the seeds of feminism and that patriarchy is a cyclical process, as perennial as the feminist intermediary that eventually unravels it, and its culmination will always be societal collapse every time. Patriarchy creates wealth and affluence, as well as hyperinflation of female reproductive value. Thus, male wealth and resource will inevitably flow towards women in any patriarchy, leading to a population of women with sufficient leisure time and wealth furnished by their only contribution to society having to be reproductive ability, which is also incredibly overvalued in any patriarchy. And so this leisure time and the woman's ability to gauge her own overinflated value results in her entitlement mentality, uh, which creates licentiousness and demands for increased political influence from women, and eventually an unlimited demand from women for government protection and provision, which leads to the unrestrained government growth typical to feminism and eventually to societal bankruptcy and collapse. The cycle will then repeat with whichever civilization takes its place, except 
uh, that in this particular case, uh, this time, technology has developed sufficiently to the point where right at the feminist intermediary that follows the patriarchy apex, technology is developing to the point where the power of the female reproductive ability can be challenged. And so the male pill is a manifestation of the man's desire to decouple women from their ability to decide when and where and how a man will be allowed to reproduce, uh, which is exactly what men need, a chance to control when they become fathers regardless of female input. Men wish to gain access to a safe birth control product that says to women that if you want to have children with me, you will do so on my terms and when I'm ready for it. And if not, I will go elsewhere, and you won't be able to end up pregnant right when I'm about to leave by missing your birth control. Now, uh, and, and please pardon the reverb, I had to uh, switch rooms to continue this video. But the, the ultimate conclusion uh, of this male desire to control his own reproduction will be uh, the artificial womb. Men will not seek it to replace women. Uh, they will, of course, still be physically attracted to them and will seek sex with them. But they will do so knowing that if women attempt to demand exorbitant prices for their reproductive ability, as they inevitably do in a patriarchy, they will effectively price themselves out of the market. And that means that although women will retain the power that comes with their sexual lure, they will lose the power that comes with their reproductive ability according to how they set the price to it. Now, uh, nobody's advocating for replacing women here. Uh, the amount of conflation that I've seen from traditionalists uh, in the past couple of days is, is quite simply staggering. Uh, but we are uh, simply introducing some much needed incentive uh, into a world that for too long has allowed women to coast through civilization, contributing nothing in terms of science, civilizational defense, infrastructure, culture innovation, and everything else. Uh, women going into the future will be challenged, uh, whether we like it or not. A power struggle does exist between the genders whether we like it or not. And whether we like it or not, men are acting decisively via the male pill and science to grab more power. And this will happen, regardless of whether or not you approve. It will happen as a function of technological development, not as a function of patriarch moralities. Men will embrace this technology, even the ones criticizing it. When the pill becomes available, men will embrace it. When the artificial womb becomes available, men will embrace it. Yeah, I mean, it's just that simple. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, uh, the male pill, since it is the technology that will be available in the most immediate future, should be of utmost importance to the men's movement. I mean, it's probably the most uh, important single technological development that the men's movement can pursue. Now, uh, as far as the patriarchs and traditionalists that can't seem to understand what's happening here, Women are not going back to the traditional family unit. I mean, you can beg them to go back to playing house all you want. Uh, the facts are that immediately after they calculated that they didn't have to be in the traditional family unit, they bailed. They made it perfectly clear to anybody not stamping their feet about a return to patriarchy that they no longer wanted it. I'm not going to sit here and try to force women to go back to doing something that they clearly do not want to do. And furthermore, Men don't want to go back to patriarchy either. Your precious family unit took millennia to build and unraveled in 60 short years of feminist attack. And if you manage to rebuild this traditionalist family unit, it will succumb again eventually to feminism. We want out. Men want out. I'll leave it to the traditionalists, call us separatists and women haters all they want. But the fact is that no prominent MRA uh, within the men's rights movement is advocating a return to patriarchy and because they know that men do not want to go back to it. Full stop, period. So that I gotta say for now.